Can hypokalemia produce any uh, acid base imbalance? Hypokalemia metabolic acidosis. Hypokalemia metabolic acidosis. Diabetes acidosis in hypokalemia also produces. Renal tubular acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis. Renal tubular acidosis. One type of renal tubular acidosis is a type of Sorry. Acidosis. No, acidosis with hypokalemia. Uh, <laughs> What is it, Tim's? Everybody knows. Tim's. 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 That sweating produces chips. Body will become cold. After high degree fever, it will become cold. So suddenly there are chips. Okay. There is a process. All protective measures for the body. Okay. But chills indicates very high degree fever. That's all. Like the inner fat infection, us in the body, pneumonia, and okay. That only indicates very high degree fever. Malaria. Nostrils were uh, around four to five times in a day. Uh, initially, uh, it was uh, associated with a few drops of blood, which later subsided. The patient also complained of decreased appetite and generalized tiredness. He had history of recent travel to Delhi. Drops of fresh blood but after passing schools are a first kids. So, what do you think? Is it a uh, ready diary or something else? Hey, all these things are important when you are giving a history of blood in the stools. If it is mixed completely, the, the stool itself is blood, that is different. After passing stools, one or two drops of blood coming out is different, totally entirely different. Hmm? So what is that? After passing the stools, if you are getting one or two drops of blood, what is that? It is a common problem. Fissure, hemorrhoid. Okay, that is not a serious disorder, but if the stool itself is bred, then it is hemorrhagic diarrhea or uh, it is called as dysentery. Dysent dysent okay. So that is a serious bacterial infection. Okay. Normally, endric fever will not produce blood in your stools. Normally. But later says it can produce. History of recent travel to Delhi and Vietnam was there, sir. Okay. So, uh, around three weeks back, uh, following which he started the symptoms. Okay. History of foot intake as well as water intake from outside was there. Uh, no history of any vomiting, uh, abdominal pain. Mm -hmm. Why not? It's a high guard area. That again is a lot of forest area. What are the common diseases which can which can get from uh, forest areas? It's not a thick forest, but it is a forest area. Tropical fever, we can also in the tropical area. Tropical fever is endric fever, malaria, typhoid, everything comes in tropical area. What is the common type of infection you get in Munar, malaria, other than routine tropical fevers? We see a lot of routine tropical fevers. 
Basic difference between salmonella typhi and paratypha. Any difference? Is the paratypha 
actually cause more GI symptoms, okay. but it is less uh, severe than typhoid. More diarrhea, yeah. but less yes. severe fever and other symptoms. So, okay. easy, easy what are the organs involved in typhoid uh, routinely? Like routinely, you, give, you see only fever. By the time we treat the patient, if the patient, like this patient, delayed treatment patient is not received treatment, what are the organs which can be involved in typhoid? Almost all organs in your body can be involved. Everything can be involved. Other typical clinical findings which may uh, which may give a clue that this is typhoid from other types of fevers. That is not very commonly seen in Indian population because of the color of the skin may be slightly darker most of the patients. But that is a positive finding. Quartered tongue. Quartered tongue is another important body tongue is another important piece of that. This one's a lingi you have. This one you have. Relative. Relative bradyx. That is a very classical finding of type. Sometimes you can get in lingi also. Okay. Relative bradyx. Okay. Then. First week, if patient presents the most sensitive uh, infection investigation would be a blood culture. Uh, then, uh, if uh, by uh, third week it is better to send for a stool culture, and by the fourth week urine culture uh, to uh, look for the organisms. Other than that, uh, pathogenesis of the patient uh, pathogenesis is basically uh, the uh, bacteria goes and invades into the uh, epithelial cells uh, inside the macrophages. Then it will go to the Paris patches. It will. Uh, enter into the pears patches and there uh, mesenteric uh, in the reticular uh, endothelial system uh, patient will uh, start uh, multiplying in the mesenteric lymph nodes following which it will go to the bloodstream and it will be bacteria and there will be seeding to different organs uh, other than that uh, investigation wise uh, we usually see leukopenia in uh, okay. uh, typhoid fever but in children leukocytosis can also be seen where is leukocytosis in typhoid fever Perforation. Perforation. So that you have to keep in mind. There, the two important findings may alter. One is a tachycardia okay. can be there, and a council increase when there is a perforation. perforation. Okay, it is a common uh, parasite infection which can be associated with typhoid. Common parasitic infection. It is called as algid malaria. Algid malaria. Okay. Uh, malaria is most yeah. of the time malaria malaria is associated with gram negative infections especially typhoid we don't know what is the reason for that mm -hmm. but it is many patients you can see this uh, then uh, we might also have uh, we see a moderate elevation of otpts in uh, uh, lab values and then blood culture 90% uh, sensitive in the first week uh, then we can also go for viral test viral okay. test will basically see the o antigen as well as h antigen uh, the rise of titrus is more significant. Okay. Uh, Rising titrus more. Okay. Uh, so usually O antigen is for uh, acute infection. Uh, H antigen will not uh, demonstrate acute infection. Okay. It will be usually some pre-infection. What is an anam anamnestic reaction? Uh, when a patient is currently infected, with, there can be a positive uh, reactions with other. Uh, okay. Other also. other bacteria yeah. or virus so can so also produce positivity positive. in. Voidal test that is anamnestic reaction, H is positive there. Okay. 
So we have to see for the rise in titers. Okay. If rise in titers is four, more than fourfold, okay. then we can see the patient okay. is having uh, enteric fever, sir. And then there another test is uh, we can go for ELISA test. Uh, ELISA test will test basically uh, IgG and IgM antibodies. Okay. But uh, it is not a quantitative. Uh, it is a qualitative test only. Only positive or negative we can find out. Uh, that is. Uh, Prevention has to be given for the patient. What is the prevention? Which type of patients you will be uh, like more uh, hmm. cautious regarding the prevention? Food industry, anybody who is cooking. Uh, hmm. Like chefs or anybody is in food industry, hmm. we have to be very careful. Otherwise, uh, most hmm. of, like they can spread even then. Hmm. How do you prevent the carrier state? Carrier state, we have to give antibiotics for uh, around one month, sir. The okay. stool culture has to be repeated. What antibiotic? Uh, sir, we can give uh, ciprofloxacin. Okay. Uh, Quinolones. Quinolones, we can give. Uh, if uh, quinolones, then we can give uh, uh, amoxicillin. Okay, uh, better to give quinolones. Quinolones, okay. uh, 500 mg BD for okay. 28 days. After the stool uh, culture to be repeated, if it is no normal, then they can join uh, work again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you.